compression pen, uh, you measure an adult vital capacity. You do this parameter to a person and you uh, measure the vital capacity and find that it's only half, about, uh, half of normal. Vital capacity decreased to about half of normal. Uh, list some possible reasons. What are the reasons behind that? There are uh, some reasons behind that. It could be the first thing of what restrictive lung disease. It was, could be due to restrictive lung disease. Why we say could be due to? We cannot diagnose uh, restrictive lung disease by spirometry, as we say, but we can only exclude it if vital capacity is normal. But we can go to the further investigation in order to make sure. But first, you have spirometry. You think of three possible causes. Um, one of them is one of them is uh, restrictive lung disease. Another one is could be the patient uh, have obstructive lung disease. Obstructive lung disease, you know, in the obstructive lung disease, that especially in the sphere obstruction, what will happen to the lung, the sphere obstruction, uh, what will happen to the vital capacity reduced because of entrapment of air. Safer. When air entrapment increase means residual volume increase. When residual volume increase, what will happen to the vital capacity? Vital capacity reduced. So. The total lung capacity is normal or either increased. The problem is not in the vital capacity itself, but the problem is in residual volume. So increasing residual volume by entrapment of air remaining in the lung more than normal will cause reduced pulse in the vital capacity. So this is another cause of the decrease in the vital capacity. So that's why we say spirometry cannot diagnose restrictive because this could be due to severe obstruction also. And could be due to improper tapping. The patient maybe couldn't fill lung normally with air. Or with, um, so the patient not do good effort or not follow the instruction. So if the patient couldn't fill the, the lung with air, so there is decrease in inspiration. That's why the volume of air that expire will be decreased. Or the patient cannot expire fully or will not expire fully. He or she may can. Could, uh, she could do that, but she will not um, because of fear or because of the didn't understand the procedure. Well, that's why it's better to uh, correct the patient well and uh, demonstrate for the patient how the procedure will take place and how the expiration inspiration could be done. So either the uh, decrease due to this reason, either. Uh, the lung are not felt normally in inspiration due to disease or due to, as we say, poor effort or due to disease causing reducing lung expansion, so restricted lung disease. Or the lung are not emptied normally on expiration due to obstructive di disease or due to both of them, or due to error in the technique. What will happen to the compliance of the lungs in respiratory distress syndrome? Compliance G there, like at the respiratory distress syndrome, you know, in the respiratory distress syndrome is one of the major cause of the decrease in the compliance, compliance reduced. You know, surface tension, when we have surface tension, surface tension is among the factors that it increase compliance. Why? Because it increases the recoil pressure. Where cloud pressure increase, so stretchability decrease, easiness of stretching of the lung decrease. So um, in the case of the respiratory distress syndrome, these um, baby born without surfactant or with the exchange amount of surfactant, and surfactant's effect is to reduce surface tension to the normal level, but when there's less surfactant, the surface tension is high, so the recoil pressure is high, and the lung cannot be expanded. And uh, also in the severe form of the respiratory distress or atelectasis, there will collapse of most of the alveoli, and this will all cause what? Cause decrease in the expansion and decrease in the compliance. Describe the movement of the chest wall in the baby with respiratory distress syndrome and explain what you described. We can look at the video here. of the baby 
with the respiratory distress syndrome. Look at the ribs and intercostal spaces for the aperture. You can see the area in between the ribs, the, the suprasternum, the intercostal, the subcostal, all in vaccinates inward. Could you see here? Huh? Could you see here in the subcostal region special? You can see this in vaccination. Also between the ribs, according to the spirit of the aspartic system. So the uh, child is in this stretch. So why this happen? Why this invagination occur? What is the cause? Do you know what is the cause? Not only say because of collapse of the lung, of course because of collapse of the alveoli, but what is the uh, why in the collapse of the alveoli this will happen? Why collapse of the alveoli will uh, cause or lead to this uh, invagination of the uh, in between ribs or beneath the ribs? Of course, this is collapse and epileptosis. Of course, when there is a lease with a child, the compounds decrease. The lung cannot expand well because of the epileptosis or the collapse of the alveoli, because of the high surface tension. Um, the lung cannot expand well. Because the lung cannot expand well, the body tries to use extra muscles. The extra muscles try to expand while giving inspiration. Um, so what they will do? They will increase the negativity of intrapleural pressure more because it expands the chest more. So the negativity increase more. When the negativity increase more, it try to suck the lung, but it cannot. It can, the lung couldn't be sucked into the chest wall because it's already collapsed and because it has a uh, high surface tension. So what will happen? There's the high negative pressure there. There will be sucking of the soft tissue in between the ribs. So sucking of the soft tissue instead of the sucking of the lung because the lung couldn't be expanded. Uh, that's why sucking of the soft tissue in between the ribs and beneath the ribs and above the sternum cause this recession, which is called subcostal, suprasternum, uh, and intercostal recession. In the normal lung, where in the area is the highest flow resistance? Resistance, the respiratory tract, the chishwenia, the hamuziatra. During inspiration, during expiration. During peak inspiration and during forced expiration. We discussed that in the forced expiration. If you remember, we said during forced expiration, because of the excess pressure on the area and compression of the airway, there will be uh, the alveoli in the bronchial or the bronchial, the lower airway will be affected more. So during forced expiration, the lower airway or the smaller bronchial will be affected. While in peak inspiration, during inspiration, peak inspiration, the larger airway will be affected. Uh, or the higher resistance will be in the larger airway. Why in the larger airway? Because the smaller airway, they are uh, they are uh, so great in number and they are all in the parallel when the air moves into them they uh, are like um, there is uh, less resistance it looks like somewhat uh, big um, uh, so bigger like uh, than that of the trachea, bronchi and so on um, although they are very small but when you connect all together uh, it will become like a big area, so have great surface area that uh, has uh, the great diameter that decreases the resistance. So during inspiration, the airways like the nose and the trachea, so the upper airway has higher resistance during peak inspiration. And then the nose, you know, there is also trabeculi, there is like uh, this, the air move inside the conchae of the nose, uh, this movement of air goes uh, also increase more resistance to the air. Why 
do we tend to breathe through our mouth in exercise? Why during exercise we tend to breathe through our mouth? Both the Atilakati exercise have a mouth breathing uh, technique nose. So we tend to breathe through our mouth, uh, not our nose, mostly through our mouth during exercise. Why? What do you think? What is the relation of this to the flow and the resistance? We need higher flow of air. We need less resistance during exercise. So what do you think? Because to decrease the resistance of the nose, as we said, the upper areas have more resistance, and also to decrease the anatomical dead space. You know the anatomical dead space part of it's by the nose, so we skip this one, and it's only in the mouth. So the resistance by the nose, the resistance and anatomical dead space by the nose will be skipped. So uh, breathing with the mouth will, to decrease the resistance and decrease the anatomical dead space. And this is important for higher flow and higher, higher volume of air. We come to the um, last part of the, this group work, which are the MCQs. Either uh, only tell either true or false. The lungs expand if removed from the body. Is it true or false? Lung expand if removed from the body. Removed from body. So there is no thorax, no thoracic cage. The lung expand. Is it expanded? No. Of course, if we remove the lung, it will recoil because it has the elastic fibers. It try to recoil. But thorax is opposite. If you remove thorax from the body uh, or open the thorax to outside, what will happen? It will go outside, recoil outward. Well, lung recoil in. Air in the pleural space will reduce vital capacity. If there is air in the pleural space, it will cause reducing the vital capacity. Is it true or false? Of course, true. Why? Because Air in the pleural space, we push on the uh, lung, lung cannot expand, so it will cause decrease in the vital capacity. 3. If the diaphragm contracts, lung volume will increase. Contraction of the diaphragm, diaphragm like this, long shape, and contracted come in uh, downward, of course, the lung volume increases. It is true. In a forced expiration, the diaphragm is driven into the thorax by contraction of the intercostal muscle. No, not by contraction of intercostal muscle. It is driven into the thorax by what well, during forced expiration by forcing the abdominal content, and this is by uh, abdominal muscles mostly, external and abdominal muscle and abdominal rectus. Um, this is uh, the question one. The compliance of the lung is the pressure change per unit volume change. Is it true or false? It is the pressure change per unit volume change. It is false. Why? We said volume change per pressure change. So we said how much volume, uh, how much pressure change is needed for the volume to be changed. That, that's why it is opposite. What about the second one? Lung compliance is greater if the lungs are expanded nearly completely than if they are at low volume. Lung compliance is greater if lungs are expanded nearly completely. That is false. Uh, when the lungs are nearly completely expanded, lung compliance is not more, it is less. Why? Because the elastic fiber all come to the end. They will try to return to the um, so the recoil pressure will increase to try to recoil the elastic fiber. So the lung compliance is not greater when the lung expanded nearly completely than the lower volume. Third, if the compliance of the lungs increase, pressure at any given lung volume will be high. If the compliance of the lung increase, compliance increase, easily stretch, pressure at any given lung volume will be high. Uh, well here, when we say pressure at any given lung volume, means the pressure in the pleural space, pressure at any given lung volume will be high. No, it needs less pressure.
pressure. It needs less pressure change. Less pressure is needed for the lung to stretch. That's what causes compliance increase. So it is false. Fourth, fibrosis of the lung decreases compliance. Fibrosis decreases compliance. Easy. Yes, it is true. Surfactant is created by type 2 alveolar cells. It's true. Surfactants created by type 2 alveolar cells. Surface tension force increase at high lung volume. Of course, it's true. When the lung volume becomes high, the alveoli stretch. The surfactant molecule will become uh, far from each other, apart, uh, away from each other. So the surface fluid will appear uh, more. There is less barrier between the uh, air in the alveoli and the fluid line in it. So there will be increase in the surface tension. Uh, in comparison to the lung line, it is small. Third, the surface tension of the fluid line in the lungs at any given volume is greater when the lung is being expanded than when it is recoiling. Surface tension of fluid line in the lungs at any given volume is greater when the lung is being expanded than when it is recoiling. Of course, surface tension is higher when the lung is being expanded. Absence of surfactant reduces the number of alveoli in the lung. Do the absence of surfactant has effect on the number of alveoli? Yes, it has effect. How? Because when surfactant decreases, because of increased surface tension, there will be collapse of some alveoli. So the number of alveoli will decrease. When the alveoli collapse, as we say, we have two bubbles, the small bubbles for the air inside the small bubble or because of the high pressure will go to, uh, to the larger bubble so it will become a larger bubble the small bubble will collapse wakawa yaka wutman bubble wakawa yaka bubble chukwa yaka kutaya so the alveoli that collapse the smaller alveoli will disappear because their air will go into the larger air or the adjacent uh, alveoli Absence of surfactant lead to greater inspiratory effort. Of course, when there is less surfactant like that of the uh, entire respiratory distress syndrome, you need greater effort, greater pressure change. Last and secure, I think. The first one, airflow in the trachea is always laminar. No, it is turbulent, not laminar. This is because of the high resistance in this area. The resistance and also because of their walls. The resistance to airflow through the bronchial is greater in expiration than in inspiration. Resistance to airflow through the bronchial is greater in expiration. Yes, we discussed this. Resistance is greater during expiration than inspiration in the bronchioles. When we say bronchial, the smaller area. The resistance to airflow would be increased by inhalation of Beta 2 adrenoceptor agonist. Beta 2 agonist, you remember that? Beta 2 agonist is sympathetic agonist. Let's say that resistance to airflow will be increased. What are the factors that affect resistance? One of them is diameter, diameter of the airway. Beta 2 agonist causes dilation of the airway. So when the airway becomes dilated, the resistance decreases, not increase. So it is false. Partial occlusion of a large airway will reduce maximum flow in expiration. When there is partial occlusion of large area, will reduce the maximum flow in expiration. This will affect both inspiration and expiration.